Derek Chauvin's knee killed George Floyd. Because the officer was not concerned with hurting another human being, but rather just doing his job. Although Floyd yelled, I can't breathe, the officer simply ignored his cries for help. Meanwhile, the world watched, some empathized, but others just categorized Floyd as a criminal. This action demonstrates that we're in a crisis. Okay, okay, it's 2021, and I know everyone thinks I'm talking about a global pandemic here, but no, I'm talking about an empathy crisis. And the 280 characters on Twitter and the willful thoughtlessness help contribute to this deficit. Marshall McLuhan states that the medium is the message. Well, our messages today depict a lack of empathy. Let's take a look at a few tweets. Elon Musk, pronouns suck. Donald J. Trump, I won't let those thugs dishonor the memory of George Floyd. Regardless of your political or ideological, ideological beliefs, this demonstrates a lack of cultural competency and empathy. I'm a professor in the Department of Communication at Valparaiso University. And in my classes, we talk a lot about media, race, class, culture, and yes, communication. So let's get at the heart of communication, conversation. Benjamin Barber states that conversation is the basic act of civility. However, we're not practicing this civility here. What are we doing? We're lacking empathy. And the internet, more than any other medium, has significantly impacted this empathy. Chenister Rasta state that the internet is the new public sphere where people can voice their opinions. This is true. However, we're missing a key component here, empathy. So, what is empathy? According to philosophers and scientists, there are three types of empathy. Emotional contagion, mentalizing, and empathetic concern. And all three types are extremely important. So what is emotional contagion? Emotional contagion is that feeling. It's the mirror effect of empathy. So let's just imagine your friend tells you that their parents died of COVID-19. What would you do? You would feel that person's pain. Next is mentalizing. This is kind of the mind reading. So this is when you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes. The next type of empathy is empathetic concern. And this is the action. This is the motivation to do good. So for example, when you want to help your friend and you tell your friend something, that's the action behind it. It's part of a Buddhist philosophy, the karuna. But all three types of empathy are extremely important. Why? Because they promote kindness and they help us celebrate empathy, and hopefully we won't have this crisis. So now I've talked about empathy and what it is, but what is its relationship to technology? Okay, so earlier I mentioned Benjamin Barber and the basic act of civility. So we talk about technology and civility. More than any other medium, the internet has profoundly influenced the production and reproduction of conversations. In 2009, there was a study done, and because of the internet, empathy scores have decreased while self-promotion has increased. And guess what? The internet has something to do with it. According to a 2020 Fast Company article, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter lack empathy. And here's why. 
They're in their echo chambers. They don't really listen to what everyday people think. They only know what people in tech or in communication think. Number two, they operate in grand principles. All talk and no action. They value individualism and hard work, what makes it extremely difficult to promote empathy. However, let's face it, technology is real life. You see me right now. So that's why empathy is so important. Empathy holds us together as a society. Because of the internet, we're more intertwined than we ever have been before. Globalization and TV, they affect us. And guess what? We were successful as humans because we practice empathy. But that didn't happen when George Floyd was killed. Chauvin was not able to put himself in another person's shoes. But this speaks more to our society than it actually does to Chauvin and his personal actions. Because we gain our worldviews and how we see the world from society. And social media, whether they've done it consciously or unconsciously, specifically user-generated, has invoked this crisis. Media's pervasiveness has been seen not only in 2020, but it's been seen in history. For example, Rwanda, the Holocaust, United States hate crimes, and the U.S. insurrection. Okay, so now I've given you all the bad news. I promise there's something good here. Media and user-generated content can also heighten empathy. So I know some people think that empathy is like a superpower, something that it's born with. But according to Jamil Ziki and Carolyn Calloway Thomas, you can build your empathy like a superpower, like eating well, like exercise. So you can learn it too. So let me go ahead and tell you how you can bridge that gap. Although my list is not extensive, here are three things that you can think about to build empathy on and offline. First of all, imagine a friend is a stranger. If your friend tells you that they cheated on their significant other, you wouldn't say you're a terrible and bad person. You would ask why. I encourage you to do the same with a stranger online. Number two, be mindful that humans are complicated and complex. Our race, our class, our gender, our economic status, all shape our identities. So often we hear people say, all white people are all black people are, or all Latinx people are. I know this is an easy thing to say, but allow a human to be themselves. Allow someone to surprise you. I know it's easier to hang out with somebody who looks like you, but I ask you to step back and enjoy the complexities of human beings. And my final point, use empathetic language so you can be the bridge. So when you're in opposition, don't point fingers. Instead, ask questions. Why would you think that? When you're doing that, you're actually practicing what we call empathetic concern. So the next time you send a tweet or you're in a face-to-face -face conversation, I hope that you practice the empathetic imperative so you can be the bridge. Because remember, we cannot not communicate.